Welcome back to Lee Anderson's Real World. We're going back in the day now with legendary chef Anthony Worrell Thompson. Thanks, Hi. Anthony, for coming on the show. Look, let's get straight to it because Absolutely. yeah, you started cooking at an early age. It was was it forced upon you? It was slightly. Yeah. My my parents were both actors. One of my father left when I was three. My mother was always working, so I was often dumped with au pair girls. And one of them gave me a raw bacon sandwich. She was German. I think she thought it was Lashinkan or Palm Ham or something. I said, enough's enough. So I moved on very quickly. Did you eat that? I, I sort of attempted it, but no, it didn't go down How well. can you chew raw bacon? I like it now. <laughs> but it so, has to be really well smoked. Okay, so you started at an early age. It was forced upon you, really, through, uh, through not liking the food that you was being served up. Yeah. But you went to uni, didn't like that too much, and then ended up in a kitchen somewhere. Yeah, I did a hotel management course. and. Okay. You'd, you'd spread too thin, you have to do a bit of this, a bit of that, and I don't really want to know how carpet's made. So I, I love the practicality of cooking. And the, uh, you did a little bit of an hour's cooking a week in that, and they said, whatever he does, don't let him in the kitchen. <laughs> I, I was doing Dover Soul in bright blue and whatever it was in those days. But yeah, I, a chef didn't turn up one day, and I went in the kitchen and stayed there ever since. You loved it. I love it. I mean, I still cook now. I've sold one of my restaurants, but I've still got one. And I just love being on the stoves. But it's not well paid, Anthony, is it? And, it, and it's awkward hours, it's unsociable hours. How do you put up with that? It's getting harder and harder, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I, I, apart from two weeks of my career, I was a head chef. So I conned my way into the job, told the second chef what to do, then watch how he did it. And uh, so my management <laughs> skills did come in useful. But um, yeah, so I've always been fairly well paid um, and obviously, if you do a bit of telly, it's good yeah, for everything. I suppose that's all out. But I mean, it is for the youngster coming into this industry, it's, it's poor money, poor yeah. money. It is. Now, I get a little bit of stick um, on social media. No, really? It, yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> Over my comments are made about food poverty. Now, we did a project a few years back, me and some other MPs, a local food bank, and some volunteers, where we was batch cooking. A chef told me, a good chef, local chef, that he could feed a family of five for 50 quid a week. I didn't believe him. So we threw the challenge out, we had a bet. We went to the local supermarket, bought 50 quid's worth of groceries with some kids. And the following day, we got in the kitchen, we filmed it all, and he managed to um, rustle up 172 meals for 50 quid. That worked out, Brilliant. didn't it? 30 pence a meal. And when I said this yeah. in Parliament, I got absolutely roasted. Now, you'll know better than me. You're a chef. Can we make food, wholesome food, cheap? You can, you can. You've got to search around for it a bit. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, going to the supermarket at the end of the day and getting the good value meals. I mean, not ready meals, but product. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to buy ready meals, you should have to pay a lot for it. But yeah. if you're going to cook from scratch, yeah. I mean, certainly in the winter, you've got a root vegetables are really cheap, good value. You can do things. I mean, I, last night, I just took some pork and made a, a lab, a, um, which is a sort of stir fry thing with server less sleeves. Cost me 70p a portion. 70p. And, I, and I, I was doing it for the family. That's not skimping. Yeah. So it is possible, but unfortunately, they've lost their way with food. They, they love watching it on telly, but they don't actually what, like it. Why have they it. lost their way with food? And why can't people cook from scratch anymore? I think it's they don't get enough education at school in that respect. It's always a voluntary subject. If and parents? At all. Parents are lazy quite often. I hate to say that. I don't generalize, obviously, usually, but a lot of them are. Uh, and they, they'll push them out and go and get a sort of yeah. fast food meal. You know what winds me up, Auntie, is when people say to me, ah, oh, but your processed junk food is cheaper than, than, than fresh ingredients. I don't think it is. No, it's not. Not really. If you, anal if you really analyze it, it's not. Yeah. You see, it appears cheap. But then, you know, you've got people going out there spending four quid on a cup of coffee, yeah. eight quid on an avocado on toast or whatever. Their, their priorities, the youngsters' priorities have changed big time. So they're not really interested in cooking. They want to be served. And I think that's a big problem for our industry as we go forward. Now, you must have cooked in the past for some famous people. Who's the most famous person you've cooked for? And what was the feedback like? <laughs> it's probably the Queen, actually. Queen? You cooked <laughs> yeah. for the Queen? Good, God bless her. Uh, yeah, I did it on HMS Victory um, many years ago. And she was coming around and we met her and she shake her hands delicately with her little white gloves on. But the Duke of Edinburgh was coming behind, uh, and he obviously cracks a joke. Oh, you're that little runt who rattles pots and pans on Saturday mornings. He wake me up every single Saturday. And, um, I mean, they're good. I, I did Princess Diana, did 700 at the um, wow. Guild Hall for her Royal Marsden charity. Um, yeah, I've, I've done a few. 
So what would uh, Princess Diana, that's an interesting one, what, what did you cook for Princess Diana? It was called Great Chefs of the Decade, so I okay. knew I had to get, by calling them that, I, I played on their egos. Nobody wanted to miss out on being called a great chef. So I organised that and okay. we did a seven course dinner for, wow. for her charity. Any difficult uh, customers in the past that um, didn't like what you uh, put in front of them? You've always got difficult customers. It doesn't matter where you go. I, th I think what I've tried to do in my career, I mean, I did Nouvelle Cuisine and made a good name restaurant called Menage à Trois many years ago in Beach yeah. and Place. And that was Princess Diana's apparently favorite restaurant. Really? Um, but it was very small, pretty pictures on plates, not a lot of substance. Now, I'm really into big flavors, doesn't matter what part of the world it comes from, as long as it tastes nice. Yeah. I hate people to say, oh, you can't call it that. Why not? You know, if they've invented a dish in Portugal or India, yeah. and you can improve on that dish, yeah. why shouldn't you? I mean, I've been to some of the restaurants in, in London and some of the, the, the posher ones, should we say, and you get these, these plates come about that big, <laughs> and you get a portion on about that big. <laughs> now, I know it's all about the experience and the flavor, but I'm sorry, Anthony, I want a plate full of mash, Come some, to my restaurant. Some part, <laughs> in fact, I've been to one restaurant. Um, it was a local restaurant to where I live, actually. At, at, at the end of the night, we had to go to the chip shop on the way home. Because <laughs> we're that hungry. What is it? Is, is it? is it the experience? Is it a bit snobbery involved? Yeah, I think you go through that as a chef. You, it's your ego. You want to prove you can do it. You want to, you know, do all this sort of poncy stuff. And it's a fashion. It's going to go out of fashion. This molecular gastronomy has not got a lot. Yeah. life left in it, I don't think. People, especially when there's a crisis going on and the economy is bad, they want substance, they yes. want good food in their stomachs. We talked about difficult um, punters earlier. And surely, you know, in your, in your time in the restaurants, there must have been some characters come in trying for a freebie that's had a meal, scoffed it all, and at the end of it said, I didn't really like that, and, and, and tried to get a <laughs> refund. Or did, did you come across that? Yeah, you do, you do. I mean, you get some real... I don't want to say that's a word beginning with A, but I mean, there is a, I mean, I had one who, we, we had a restaurant called 190 Queensgate and it was very, very, very busy. And we got this table for six, friend of the other directors and said, okay, but you'll have to be out by eight. Came eight, I came along, said, I'm sorry, would you like to have dessert? We got a little separate room for dessert. No, we're staying. I said, no, you're not. Yes, we are. And he said, and he said to me, who are you? I said, well, I'm one of the directors and I'm the chef proprietor, if you want to call it that. Yeah. So they refused to go. So I got the waiters, I'd clear the table. It was a round table and there were six, six of them around the round table. I got the waiters to lift the table over their heads and nothing more embarrassing than me sitting in a circle with nothing in the middle, is there? Wow. So those are the sort of things I used to do in my youth. But you, <laughs> another one, Sirloin, they said, this sirloin is frozen. Tell the chef he can stick that up where the sun doesn't shine. And I said, mm, I was very proud of my meat, hanging on blood, dripping on, yeah. on the bone. I took it out, cleared the table, threw this big piece of meat like this on the table. I said, if that's frozen, you can stick it there yourself. Well, and what sort of response did you get? <laughs> His wife loved me, came up to me and said, I've been wanting someone to do that to me for to him for ages. You talked about schools earlier, Anthony, and the fact that we, we the, the food education's not there in mm. schools. This is something I've sort of campaigned on a little bit. I want to see it back uh, on the curriculum in every school. I know some mm. schools do teach it, but yeah, it's so do. important to, to learn children how to make basic meals. Well, also just to learn a bit of knowledge about food. You know, you've got kids out there who don't know ham comes from pigs. You know, they think it just comes in a bag from yeah. Tesco's or wherever. Um, and I think it's that food education, as much as cooking, yeah. understanding food, understanding what goes with what, and, and teaching them the basic skills. If you've got a, yeah. a, a portfolio of about 12 dishes, you can get some And we that. see that in some of the poorest countries, the food actually tastes nicer. Brilliant, yeah. Because they really have to look for stuff, don't they? They do. I mean, I've just come back from Bali a few weeks ago, and the food was amazing, yeah. you know, and really cheap ingredients and very cheap to buy in the restaurants. Um, and it's fab. We should be able to do more of that. Yeah, I think um, I like my Indian food, but I've been told, I've never been to India, uh, but it probably tastes a little bit different out there than what it does in our restaurants. But again, they have to be creative with what they've got available. Yeah, absolutely. They've been westernized, definitely. When you go to India, you'll see some amazing mm. flavors. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. They pander to the British public to start with, and there are Indian chefs yeah. there, brilliant chefs, who yeah. are doing unique food. Come on, Auntie. Favourite meal, your last supper, what would it be? Oh, last supper. It would have to be a pot of caviar to start with. 
I know is out of most people's price range, including my own now, uh, with some nice bellinis and your sour cream and that sort of stuff. Then a big rack, a uh, rib of British or Scottish beef with all the trimmings. And then as I'm going to die anyway, a portion of sticky toffee pudding to finish. That'll do it, won't it? That should kill me off. Auntie, that's an absolute pleasure. Yeah, nice to meet you.